Thank you very much for all these great presentations uh, until now. Uh, as we have seen from the morning session, uh, we have taken a closer look at the different drivers and dynamics of migration, who, who the migrants and the refugees are. Uh, we've also seen uh, different perspectives now on what the EU and what Europe does and what it could do uh, more of. I will try and uh, zero in on uh, what the EU does in terms of border surveillance and border control in the Mediterranean. So what happens at the very doorstep of uh, Europe? Um, and what are the dilemmas raised in terms of uh, uh, border surveillance and border control? What can be done and what, uh, or also importantly, what cannot be done in terms of border surveillance? Uh, Eurosur, the EU border surveillance system, uh, after several years of preparation, was launched in, uh, at the end of 2013. So just a few months after uh, the big uh, ship workings outside of Lampedusa, that sort of triggered more of the uh, recent uh, awareness uh, around the need to uh, respond more forcefully. Uh, but Eurosur was prepared for several years uh, ahead, since 2008. And in the final uh, Eurosur regulation, it states uh, that it has the purpose of detecting, preventing and combating illegal immigration and cross-border crime and contributing to ensuring the protection and saving the lives of migrants. Uh, what I want to start to focus on is um, the, the, the dilemma in terms of what can actually be done in terms of combating so-called illegal immigration at sea, given the responsibility to search and rescue at sea, and given the principle of non-refoulement that we have just heard more details about. Um, the central paradox, it's a way of summing up uh, uh, things that have already been said in different ways uh, throughout uh, the morning session and this afternoon already. Uh, migrants at sea are uh, seen as illegal as soon as they are on the boat uh, at sea. At best, they are uh, referred to as irregular. In EU policy documents, they were more often referred to as illegal in 2008 when uh, the EU started to prepare the Eurosur document. And then there was an awareness, okay, well, they can't really call them all illegal, so we're shifting to irregular. But basically, it's a lot of the same uh, meaning behind. Uh, but it's not, we should remember, it's not illegal to go on board a boat in North Africa. Anyone has the right to leave his or her country. It's stated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Of course, then what we are discussing now is that any sovereign state can decide on who has the permission to enter or not. The challenge here is that this is something that the uh, EU tries to do at the, the very external border uh, of uh, the EU uh, at sea. Um, then uh, we also know that for, for uh, asylum seekers, um, an illegal entry, meaning an unauthorized entry into a country, should not in any way prevent them from receiving uh, protection and asylum if they are entitled to it. So when their case are, cases are examined, if they came into that country without proper authorization, uh, that should not in any way uh, hamper uh, their access to, to asylum. Um, in practice, as we have al already seen as well, uh, those who flee and who may, may be entitled to international protection uh, today uh, sort of find themselves with no other option than this so-called illegal way of entry uh, to Europe. Uh, I would also argue that this is where sp this uh, uh, specific market for so-called smugglers and facilitators appears, but also where the insecurities along the way appears uh, because uh, migrants are forced to take, to run incredibly high risks to, uh, along the way when they migrate. The legal obligations at sea, they have already been, been touched upon, but uh, what it means in terms of, uh, of border surveillance is, uh, I will be brief, you will really touch upon this, but the search and rescue obligation means that for any vessel, uh, there's an obligation to bring uh, rescue to another vessel in distress at sea. A uh, full field search and rescue operation is not only taking them on board uh, your vessel, so rescuing them from the immediate uh, life-threatening situation, but it's also bringing them back to a safe harbour. But what is a safe harbour? Is that the nearest geographical harbour? Not uh, necessarily. It's, that's not what's stated in the uh, Solas and SAR uh, conventions. It's, 
the, the only thing that is stated is a safe harbor. So it could be the next port of destination of this vessel, or it can be, uh, as we touched upon, an agreement with uh, other vessels bringing them to, to another uh, safe harbor. But with the non-refoulement principle, uh, this sort of shifts what a safe harbor could be. It's not only, it couldn't, um, it's no longer only bringing, in, for example, migrants or seeking to rescue migrants closer to the North African coast would not uh, justify uh, like a completing a search and rescue operation by bringing the rescued back to North Africa if that compromises the non refoulement principle of uh, um, bringing uh, or preventing people from uh, applying for asylum or bringing them back to a place where they fear for their own uh, security. Uh, with the, there was a case uh, of a pushback operation uh, a few years back uh, under the framework of the uh, cooperation agreement between Italy and uh, Libya under the Qaddafi regime, where a boat of migrants uh, were pushed back uh, to Libya. Uh, but these migrants, uh, and they were not told uh, that they were being brought back to Libya, they thought all the way that they were being, being brought to, to Italy. Uh, and they were brought back to, to, to Libya and handed over to the, to the Libyan authorities and uh, put into detention centers. These uh, migrants and refugees uh, afterwards, uh, from mainly from Eritrean and Somali origins, uh, took this case to the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, which came to a judgment in uh, early 2012, which is the case of um, Hirsi and others versus Italy. The judgment of this case uh, ruled that this was a case of collective expulsion, so not assessing the individual cases, and of a, a breach of the non refoulement principle. Because even if they were stopped outside of the Italian borders, um, they are uh, it was ruled that they, they were under Italian jurisdiction because they were being brought on board an Italian uh, uh, border patrol vessel. So I think that after this uh, ruling, it has become de facto more difficult to do what was referred to as pushback operations, meaning stopping vessels outside uh, the European border and bringing them back to the North African uh, coast. Um, some of the limits of, uh, of border surveillance at sea is what I would like to say a few more words about now. Because a lot of resources are put into improving the EU, uh, EU's border surveillance capacities. We see that also now with the main EU response being to reinforce the Frontex Operation uh, Triton, uh, to being able to, to do better border control uh, outside Italy, outside Greece, uh, etc. But, uh, and it's often being presented as a, uh, it is often being repeated that Triton and Frontex is not a search and rescue agency, it's a border control agency. But uh, detection through uh, surveillance systems, and again, as I said, there is uh, a lot of resources being invested into highly sophisticated surveillance systems, uh, not only uh, coastal radars or patrol boats, uh, there are being uh, investigations into uh, the possible uses of drones for improved border surveillance. Um, but no matter how sophisticated the surveillance system, it cannot uh, sort migrants between the legitimate travelers and the illegitimate ones. That's not a, a process that can be done through a technological surveillance at sea. Um, this has to be processed by competent authorities on land in, uh, in a way that is able to assess the individual cases. As I just uh, mentioned, it seems uh, that following the Hirsi and others uh, versus Italy, the case of Hirsi and others versus Italy judgment, that it, uh, detection now uh, more rarely, it's more difficult to, uh, to detect and then push back. Um, migrants are more often detected and it becomes a de facto search and rescue operation and they are then being brought to a European harbor. Uh, because if we would think that what, what could uh, the European border guards seeking to uh, execute their border control mandates at sea, what, what could they do? If they see a boat of migrants that they suspect are uh, unauthor unauthorized migrants, well, they can't uh, intercept them and stop and leave them there. That would be putting their lives in, uh, to risk uh, 
in the current situation. They can't uh, ask him to go back either. Uh, that would be a possible breach of the non refoulement principle. So in practice, it becomes search and rescue operations where the migrants are brought to Europe. That is also... Um, in practice, what happened with uh, the Mare Nostrum operation last year, which came out of a realization that there was a massively increased need for search and rescue, but even though it was carried out outside of the Italian uh, borders, they were brought back to I Italian uh, harbors afterwards. Um, in this shift that, that I'm trying to, to address here, uh, where for a long time there, was, there were attempts to push the European border out, uh, sort of extra territorialization of the border control, pushing it out, uh, outside of the maritime borders, into third countries, etc. With the Mare Nostrum operation, there was a sort of, almost an exception, it was being brought closer to, to Europe again. I would now, uh, as a conclusion, uh, argue that the new or the more recent security focus on the so-called migrant smugglers is a way, again, of moving this border control outside the European borders uh, again. It becomes a new reason for increasing border surveillance capacities. Uh, one of the points in the, this 10-point plan of the EU uh, stated that uh, we should identify, detect, in order to destroy the migrant smugglers' uh, boats which calls for uh, more surveillance to be able to detect these migrant uh, boats. Uh, two days ago, as uh, Vigdis just mentioned as well, uh, EU leaders uh, agreed to launch a military operation to sink uh, the smugglers' uh, boats. Um, this seems to be a new way of claiming control over the situation uh, after Mario Nostrum widely became seen as uh, constituting a pull factor uh, of migration to Europe. Uh, as was mentioned this morning as well, the first time this argument was put forward as from the, from the British uh, government that Mario Nostrum basically constituted uh, a pull factor uh, of migration, it was seen as, as something almost horrific. It was quite unique. But we see that with these, this year's debates, it's, it has, it's an impression that has installed itself, that there is a fear that to rescue almost, because there's a fear to encourage uh, more migration across the sea. There's a, a series of concerns uh, raised with this new decision uh, to launch a military uh, operation, uh, which we can, of course, discuss further in the discussion session as well. Um, first, uh, what kind of means will be deployed to execute the operation? What kind of armed intervention will, will, will we see? Will it be carried out without Libya's approval? Uh, Libya has stated its concerns, or uh, the government in uh, Tripoli at least has stated its concerns with, uh, with this decision. What will be the consequences of doing something in Libyan territorial waters without Libya's approval? And will we see migrants finding themselves in the line of fire? Uh, so as a conclusion, I see this as a as I said, a way of moving, a new way of moving the EU border further out, rather than again uh, seriously discussing the strengthening of the European infrastructure for both search and rescue, but also for receiving and processing the ASLM claims. Thank you very much.